Ejecting from a plane is pretty much the last thing any pilot wants to do. Even when a pilot is forced to perform an ejection, it's not an easy process as there's a serious risk of injury. While it's dangerous, it's better than the alternative if the jet in question starts to go down. These moments can happen in a flash and the pilot must be trained to know when to make the call. Here are five pilots who ejected from fighter jets. During a training exercise back in 2003, on board the USS George Washington, the unexpected occurred. Somewhere off the coast of Virginia, the ship and its crew were conducting qualification tests. For the most part, everything went off without a hitch. That was until one of the single-seat FA-18 Hornets came in for a landing. As it did so, the arrestor cable used to stop the aircraft malfunctioned and snapped. The arrestor cable plays a critical role in aircraft carrier landings. Without it, many of the aircraft that land on these ships would be unable to do so. When something goes wrong, the results can be rather extreme. As the arrestor cable snapped, the pilot only had seconds to determine what to do. If you take a close look at the video, you'll notice how the pilots eject at the very last second, right before the plane plummets into the ocean an extreme showcase of bravery and skill. Unfortunately, things weren't in the clear just yet. When the arrestor cable snapped, it actually shot back in the other direction. Some of the crew members actually managed to jump the cable, while others weren't as lucky. There were some injuries from this event, but everybody recovered and thankfully, no lives were lost. The Apollo 11 mission is one that goes down in world history. Neil Armstrong became the hero for millions on the day that he set foot on the moon. So many people wanted to be an astronaut after that. But becoming an astronaut is one of the hardest things a person can do. It takes years of practice, repetitively doing the same activities over and over and over again until operating a space vehicle is as easy as breathing. Armstrong himself, as well as every astronaut before and everyone since, had to go through this process as well. In preparation for the historic Apollo 11 mission, Neil Armstrong was going through one of those exact exercises. May 6, 1968 was the day of his 22nd flight of a test vehicle, which was a simulated lunar lander. Everything was going as planned until an unexpected mechanical malfunction caused Armstrong to lose control. He attempted to regain control for a while, but it soon became evident that he would have to eject. As the lunar test vehicle rolled heavily to one side, Armstrong ejected, nearly parallel to the ground. He was fortunate that the thrusters on his ejection seat took him in a vertical direction. Should the angle of his thrusters been any different, he very well could have been thrown into the ground, and history would be written very differently. The vehicle crashed into a fireball, while Armstrong escaped with no injuries. Armstrong wasn't shaken in the least. He shook it off though and went on to complete a number of other test flights before launching into space. He would later go on to say that flying the actual lunar module was very similar to his experiences flying the test vehicle. The A6 Intruder was a medium-range fighter jet that was used by the United States Air Force from the 1960s into the 1990s. Although they saw a lot of action in the various wars, they were prone to mechanical failures. Such was the case for a pilot and his navigator who were assigned to serve aboard the USS Carl Vinson. In this incident, the pilot took off from the deck as normal. However, immediately after the wheels lifted off, the fighter jet was not producing power. The crew were screaming to the pilot to pull up and give it power. Unknown to them though, the engine had failed. After a period of time spent failing to get the fighter in the air, the pilot knew they had to bail. As the plane started to roll to the right side, the pilot jettisoned the fuel tank. Looking around, he saw the horizon was at 90 degrees. They were out of the envelope, or to the point where ejecting would cause the occupants to be shot downward instead of upward. But they had to chance it. Upon pulling the lever, the pilot and navigator were shot out at 90 degrees, the pilot's parachute opened just feet above the water, but the navigator didn't have a full deployment. He suffered minor injuries, but survived. K-1 
Captain Brian Udell and his weapons officer, Captain Dennis White, were stationed at an Air Force base in North Carolina, ready to run some routine training exercises. They'd done these same exercises hundreds of times in the past. Once their F-15 was over the Atlantic Ocean, they started running drills at near supersonic speeds. Tight turns, sudden ascents and descents, everything to push their skills to the limit. On doing one of these turns, Captain Udell heard wind rushing over the canopy. He then realized that he'd lost control of the jet. At the speeds they were traveling, they lost 7,000 feet of altitude in five seconds. They had to eject. There was one problem though. They were going over 800 miles per hour, faster than the speed of sound. An ejection at this speed was almost certain death as the force could rip a person apart. But they had no choice. Once ejected, his helmet, oxygen mask and earplugs were violently ripped from his head. Every blood vessel in his head and face burst. Both legs were broken and one arm was severely dislocated. All of these injuries happened due to the force of the air rushing by. Luckily, his ejection seat automatically deployed a life raft, which Captain Udell was able to enter. He was found and able to recover from his injuries. His weapons specialist, Captain White, wasn't as lucky. His body was recovered, and it was determined that he died instantly from ejecting. Although violent, the ejection itself was a miracle. Captain Udell made the decision to bail out at 10,000 feet. In the time that it took him to reach down and pull the handle, they were at 6,000 feet. After pulling the handle, and as the ejection seat left, they were at 3,000 feet. The parachute opened under 1,000 feet. By the math, Captain Udell had less than half a second to spare. Once again, we have an accident concerning the A6 intruder. It's already stressful enough knowing that you have to fly a jet that's prone to problems, but when you have to do it while trying to land on an aircraft carrier, the stress can be multiplied many times over. The pilot in this story found himself in this exact situation. Luckily, his extensive training had prepared him for the situation he would soon find himself in. As the pilot in this incident approached the aircraft carrier for a landing, he experienced a flameout, which is a violent engine failure. Although only one of the engines failed, they were past the point of no return, and there would not be enough power to get airborne again. The pilot knew that they would need to ditch. However, his training kicked in and he performed his duties flawlessly. The pilot raised the gear and turned the jet, pointing it towards the ocean. He had the presence of mind to not jettison the fuel tank as his procedure. Doing so would have caused the tank to land on the ship, endangering the crew. Once he was sure that the fighter cleared the side of the ship, the ejection levers were pulled. Both navigator and pilot survived with seconds to spare. They landed safely in the ocean and were recovered by dive teams just minutes later. Although the landing was a failure, the ejection and rescue were picture perfect. Pilots have earned their wings for sure. They demonstrated that they cannot react on impulse, but could logically assess their situation and make the best decisions to save lives. Be sure to subscribe to Most Dangerous to see more videos just like this one. With that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.